very good evening all the students is audio video fine can you update in the chat box is audio video fine can we start with the session all the students kindly update in the chat box can we start with the session is audio video fine everyone all the students the first yes every student can you update in the chat box <coughs> all my students who are going for this fmg examination but i like next 60 minutes let us use for learning must read topics which are the most important topics which are required for your upcoming examination am i understandable the beauty of times we are giving you ultra concise notes which will give you the keywords important topics important terms very good evening yes now thanks for updating in the chat box so let us start with the autology segment my aim of this session will be to give you all the important topics just brush up these topics beta before going for the examination ek din pehle just revise these important keyword which i am going to share with you first important point autology from autology very good evening dr kamal so let us start with the autology which mcq i am expecting they can ask you on button battery just remember this point they can ask you the mcq on button battery which foreign body is most dangerous foreign body so just remember button battery which foreign body can lead to facial nerve palsy they will be asking you these points so button battery is the most dangerous foreign body it can lead to facial palsy just remember this point it can lead to facial palsy done the next slide which i am showing you this is a normal tympanic membrane the first of all you should learn how this is normal tympanic membrane if they show you some red mass behind tympanic membrane very important topic i am talking about glomus tumor so beta just remember they are talking about glomus tumor which will be the key word in your mcq they will use the word pulsatile if the pulsatile symptoms are there like pulsatile tinnitus is there red mass behind tympanic membrane so glomus tumor important topic clear so i am just highlighting all the must read topic in the session can you update in the chat box yes beta dr kamal all the students attending the session yes very nice everybody responding in the chat box is audio video everything fine beta to so, pulsatile word glomus tumor very important topic blue tympanic membrane if the examiner give you blue tympanic membrane what is the clue it is a clue for serous otitis media serous otitis media blue ear blue ear so just remember serous otitis media is very important topic clear what is the treatment for serous otitis media we'll discuss in detail in the upcoming session in upcoming in upcoming minutes we will be next we'll be discussing all these points this slide is of serous otitis media beta very important they will show you blebs these are small small blebs beta so just make a golden rule if the examiner if examiner show you small blebs if the examiner show you small blebs and if the word hearing loss is there hearing loss he is talking about he is talking about serous otitis media what will be the treatment just remember treatment is myringotomy myringotomy with grommet insertion we put a grommet and if required we have to go for adenoid search adenoid ectomy so just revise with me all the students will be going for myringotomy will be going for grommet insertion will go for adenoid ectomy just next 60 minutes we are just revising all the must read topics 
audiometry pure tone audiometry most important segment beta they will ask you the graph or they will give you this graph as a keyword and they will ask you to make the diagnosis just remember if there is a airborne gap just remember airborne gap is a feature of conductive deafness so what is the motive of showing this slide motive of showing this slide is pure tone audiometry very important topic beta pure tone audiometry should be on your tips airborne gap is conductive deafness airborne gap is conductive deafness but if there is no airborne gap the ac bc both are beyond 25 both pathway are abnormal it is sensory neural deafness it is sensory neural deafness important point then the examiner can give you Carhart notch. What is Carhart notch? Carhart notch is a feature of autosclerosis. So one must read topic autosclerosis. Am I understandable? Carhart notch is seen at which frequency? It is seen at 2000 hertz. And this notch, where is the notch? Notch is in the bone conduction. Just remember, Carhart notch is in the bone conduction. Am I understandable? Or this year high probability they can ask you boiler's notch what is boiler's notch boiler's notch is your maximum hearing loss at 4000 hertz very awesome everyone is responding in the chat box that's great i i want every student attending the session should reply before i write the point on the board you should reply. this means somewhere you have revised your dams class notes so if the loss is at 4000 hertz boiler's notch you should be confident what is a WHO criteria? What is Indian Factory Act? So always remember WHO criteria is 85 decibel. Maximum limit should be 85. And Indian Factory Act is 90. But if examiner is not asking about WHO or Indian, instead he is asking about city life. Better WHO, Indian Factory Act, all these points are for noise-induced trauma. But in the city life, it is 45 decibel. Very important point. 45 decibel done coming to the next point if examiner show you this type of graph where the graph is moving up for your fmg this is very crucial the graph rising curve this graph is known as rising curve is a hallmark feature of anyone who can write in the chat box it is a hallmark feature for meniere's disease is a hallmark feature for meniers. Very important topic. Examiner will either give you MCQ from autosclerosis or meniers. And if the examiner show you this type of graph, the graph coming down, this is your down sloping graph, down sloping graph, press by QSIS. This is your high frequency hearing loss. This is high frequency hearing loss. Every student attending the session just revise with me. Just revise all these basic points with me. Then rising curve. Then this topic. After learning pure tone audiometry, next must read topic is your tympanometry. Always remember that all the important tympanograms. Tympanometry is a investigation of choice. Is a objective investigation. Is a investigation of choice for conductive deafness always conductive left so i'm showing you some graph this is a normal graph a shaped tympanogram is a normal graph if examiner show you something like this this is flat tympanogram or also known as b tympanogram now where we get flat or b tympanogram but a flat tympanogram is seen in extra fluid in the middle ear if there is a extra fluid you will get flat tympanogram and where is the B tympanogram? It is in perforated tympanic membrane. If tympanic membrane is perforated. If examiner show you this graph, this is a C tympanogram. And C tympanogram is a feature of ET tube dysfunction. ET tube dysfunction. So better all the students who are joining now, which topic we are reading? We are reading tympanometry. Must read topic for your FMG examination. Now come the most important commonly asked MCQs they will either give you AS tympanogram or AD tympanogram but what is AS AS is hypermobile is a feature of I want everybody should write in the chat box very nice response coming this is a feature of autosclerosis 
So if the examiner give you AS tympanogram, it is autosclerosis. And if this is this ossicular damage, ossicular damage. Am I understandable? It is ossicular damage. So till now, which topics we have read, all you students who are joining now, but we have completed one important topic is here. Serous otitis media should be on your tips. Treatment of serous otitis media should be there. One is your pure tone audiograms. All the eight graphs should be on your tips. What is normal? What is conductive? What is sensory neural? What is noise induced trauma? What is orthosclerosis? One is tympanometry. Very crucial, very important. I promise you, but the, the MCQ is the topic which we are reading in the next few minutes. If you revise this topic nicely, somewhere 60 to 70 percent of the MCQs of ENT you can crack very confidently. Then that, that's my promise to you. Examiner can give you this slide in the examination. So just remember in audiometry, in audiometry, which is the only one invasive investigation. Yes which is invasive investigation this is electrocochlography electrocochlography is a investigation for sensory deafness investigation of choice sensory deafness clear electrocochlography sensory deafness dr tushar beda you are asking the query the point which i will highlight here but it they are more more than sufficient but whatever is the pattern they are more than sufficient clear so electrocochlography just remember is the investigation of choice for sensory deafness now this is again expected mcq just make two stars this year i am expecting one mcq on beta brainstem evoke response audiometry all my fmg student listening to me just Highlight this. This is expected question. They will ask you, they can ask you auditory pathway E C O L R. What is E stand for? Eight now C for cochlear nucleus, O for olivary, L for lateral hemiscus, I for inferior colliculus. This is highly expected MCQ this year. I'm understandable. This is investigation of choice for your neural deafness, which is the largest wave, your fifth wave is the largest wave fifth wave is largest wave then this is again a very crucial topic eight now is wave one wave two cochlear nucleus is wave three olivary is wave four lateral lamiscus is wave five and inferior colliculus inferior colliculus is wave six and wave seven this is again one of the important topic better brainstem evoke response audiometric but must treat topic now what i am showing you any student who can write in the chat box what i am showing you can you appreciate better there is a there is some fistula there is some fistula in the roof of there is some fistula in the roof of semicircular canal so what is the diagnosis i am talking about i am talking about superior semicircular canal Dyson syndrome again important topic superior semicircular canal Dyson syndrome what are the symptom symptom is conductive deafness with CNS symptom just revise this point if you have not read this topic till now just remember four important keywords better four important keywords superior semicircular canal Dyson syndrome is your conductive deafness with CNS symptoms what is the investigation of choice? Investigation of choice is VEMP, vestibular evoke myogenic potential. Revise with me, superior semicircular canal Dyson syndrome. It is conductive deafness with CNS symptom. Investigation of choice is VEMP. Treatment of choice is wait and watch with IV antibiotics. Wait and watch with IV antibiotics. Done. Coming to the next must read topic, again, diabetic patient, diabetic patient, there is some necrosis over the pinna. If there is diabetic patient, I all these topics which I am discussing with you will be covering your PYQs beta. All the important PYQs will be covered in these topics. So diabetic patient, can you make a diagnosis? Anyone who can write in the chat box, diabetic patient, necrosis over the Temporal area. This is malignant otitis externa. This is malignant otitis externa. Every student, malignant otitis externa. 
what is the symptom symptom will be ear discharge with there will be granulation in the canal ear discharge granulation in the canal what will be the investigation of choice technetium 99 scan just remember this point and which investigation is used for prognosis if examiner ask you about for prognosis very good great nice response in the chat box it is malignant or dar is extra there will be ear discharge granulation technetium 99 is a diagnosis while prognosis is your gallium scan which other lab investigation examiner can ask you which lab investigation can be used for prognosis we use esr what is the treatment of choice this is caused by a bacteria therefore treatment of choice is your medical treatment we go for third generation cephalosporin again important slide for your upcoming examination malignant otitis externa done again what is i am showing you i am showing you wet newspaper like appearance wet newspaper like appearance it is your aspergillosis niger automycosis automycosis this can be a simple one liner for your examination wet newspaper like appearance coming to this slide i am showing you that is serous otitis media already we have discussed this point in reference of abnormal tympanic membrane in reference of abnormal tympanic membrane serous otitis media clear this is what is grommet always remember where we put the grommet grommet is inserted in antero inferior part grommet which part of the tympanic membrane we put the grommet we put grommet in antero inferior segment we put grommet in antero inferior segment let me refresh with a thanks for your update in the chat box let me refresh one second is it fine now every student is it fine is it fine now now grommet inserted in the antero inferior segment this is next important topic asom yes fine thanks thanks for the updating me this is next important point acute suppurative otitis media just remember beta asom anyone who can write in the chat box which typical image i am showing you which typical finding i am showing you this is a slide for asom anyone who can write in the chat box which typical finding i am showing you i am showing you cartwheel appearance i am showing you cartwheel appearance acute suppurative otitis media which bacteria again it is streptococcus cartwheel appearance treatment will be myringotomy what will be the treatment treatment will be myringotomy of this patient just remember myringotomy that treatment will be myringotomy they can ask you two important points one is cartwheel appearance cartwheel appearance is seen in which stage they can ask you cartwheel appearance is seen in which stage one is pre suppuration cartwheel appearance seen in stage of pre suppuration lighthouse sign is seen in stage of suppuration just remember this point cartwheel appearance stage of pre suppuration by lighthouse sign it is seen in stage of suppuration these are the two important points is it clear so what topic we are dealing with we are dealing with serous otitis media followed by asom considered on the board everyone one is serous otitis media followed by asom and finally we are discussing the most important topic that is 
chronic subcurative otitis media c s o n finally we are c s o n having two types safe c s o n unsafe c s o n media examiner will ask you either safe or unsafe safe ear is a disease in the lower part disease in the lower part of middle ear it is in the lower part of the middle ear disease in the lower part what is the treatment of safe ear that is also known as tubo tympanic ear safe ear tubo tympanic ear treatment is tympanoplastic tympanoplasty with ocr just remember this one so what one of the must read topic is your chronic suppurative otitis media and safe ear safe ear treatment is your tympanoplasty with ocr while if examiner ask you about unsafe ear what is unsafe ear disease in the upper part we call it as atticoantral atticoantral when the disease is in the upper part atticoantral the treatment of choice is here mastoidectomy treatment of choice is here mastoidectomy done every student comfortable beta this management of serous otitis media followed by asom followed by csom that is your tubo tympanic atico antral should be on your tips done which image which complication i am showing you among the complication mastoiditis mastoiditis is again one of the most important complication so they can ask you they can show you this image they can may ask you to make the diagnosis it is your mastoiditis then what is the treatment what is the most common treatment which mastoiditis we commonly do always remember it is modified radical mastoiditis modified radical mastoiditis then the modified radical mastoiditis important slide related with the abscess of the mastoid mastoid can lead to multiple abscess in head and neck the most common abscess always remember is your post auricular abscess most common abscess is your post auricular abscess done most common abscess is your post auricular abscess students kindly update in the chat box is audio video everything fine clear so most common abscess is post auricular abscess the slide the next slide which i'm showing you is your most important must read topic is your referred otalgia beta just make a start topic over this is referred otalgia all these areas lead to otalgia lead to pain in the ear and which nerves are responding just consider oropharynx larynx hypopharynx larynx and hypopharynx is coming via 10th nerve this slide is the most important bit just remember base of tongue oropharynx they are responsible by 9th nerve by hypopharynx and larynx they are via 10th nerve if the vertebra if your vertebra is involved in referred otalgia in referred otalgia it is c2 c3 fibers so always remember larynx hypopharynx esophagus all they are coming via your 10th nerve via coming via vagus nerve and if your nose and paranasal sinus if the examiner ask you about nose or paranasal sinus it is your 5th nerve am i understanding about tmj temporomandibular joint parotid gland nose all these are coming via your fifth now via fifth now any query beta even you just feel free to ask all the points you can write in the chat box this slide is referred otalgia is one of the most important for your upcoming examination that this one clear coming to the next point i'm showing you this is which slide this is something to do with management this is something to do with 
management of Meniere's disease. Anyone who can write in the chat box which management modality I am talking about. I am talking about positive pressure therapy. In Meniere's we are using positive pressure therapy. That is also known as auditory physiotherapy. Auditory physiotherapy. Auditory physiotherapy. Done. In Meniere's topic, either they will ask you something on autostosis or Meniere's. In Meniere's, they can ask you about Donaldson line. So just remember, Donaldson line is a landmark. It is a landmark for Meniere's disease. Is a landmark for Meniere's. Is a surgical landmark for Meniere's disease. That I am showing you all these images, visuals, which will help you in the examination hall. In Meniere's, we inject in the very last stage or you can say non-responding stage. Non-responding stage. We inject gentamicin. We inject gentamicin with the help of a microvic. So if the examiner show you this slide. This slide is something to do with intra tympanic injection of gentamicin. Again, a very important slide for FMG. They can show you this slide. They can ask you, this is related with which management? This is intra tympanic injection of gentamicin. Done. Intra tympanic injection of gentamicin. Coming to the next topic, which I am showing you is BPV. This question again often repeated in your FMG examination, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. Always remember, in this patient, there is a very mild vertigo for few seconds. Just remember this one. Mild vertigo is for few seconds and there is no hearing loss. There is no hearing loss in this patient. There is no hearing loss in the patient of BPV. What is the investigation of choice? Examiner will either ask you the investigation or he will ask you the treatment. If examiner asks you the investigation of choice, investigation of choice is your holpic maneuver. Holpic maneuver. If a examiner asks you investigation, it is your holpic maneuver. And if examiner asks you the treatment of choice, it is your aplase maneuver. Investigation of choice is holpic, while treatment is your aplase maneuver. Done. Coming to the next slide, this table I am showing you. This is a difference between longitudinal and transverse stretch. You know, this table, later on you can revise this table nicely. Like skull fractures, they are divided into longitudinal and transverse. Motive of conducting this session is to give you the important topic, must read topic. These are the basic points which you should be aware before going for examination. Longitudinal transverse fracture. Skull fracture divided into longitudinal and transverse. Longitudinal are more common. The tympanic membrane is perforated. There is an injury to the middle ear in longitudinal fracture. We have conductive deafness. But in transverse fracture, it is sensory neural deafness. Vestibular symptoms are more common. So all these features of longitudinal and transverse fracture, very important topic for your MCQs. Done. So all the important differences and most more common among longitudinal transverse, 80% is your longitudinal fracture. Transverse fracture is a trauma which is coming from behind. It is rare phenomenon. Clear? Glomus tumor, already I have highlighted this point. Glomus tumor is one of the most important segment. Done. So now I want to brief all the topics of ear. Now all the students listening to me, which are the important points which are must read. One, you should be confident of tympanic membrane, all the differential diagnosis of abnormal tympanic membrane. You should be master of pure tone audiometry, PTA. All the basic graphs should be on your tips. You should be confident of tympanometry. You should be confident of electrocochlography. You should be confident of BARA. I am highlighting important point. All the students who are joining now, we have just completed the must read topic of ear. 
दीज आर द मस्ट ट्रीट टॉपिक टिम्पेनिक मेमरी डिफरेंशियल डायग्नोस ऑफ एबनॉर्मल टिम्पेनिक मेमरी लाइक इफ यू सी ब्लैब्स इट इज सीरियस रॉडिस मीडिया इफ यू सी सम रेड मास इज ग्लोमस ट्यूमर प्योर टोन ऑडोमेट्रिक देन सीरस ऑटाइटिस मीडिया मैनेजमेंट ऑफ सीरस ऑडाइटिस मीडिया ए एस ओ एम सी एस ओ एम इंपॉर्टेंट कॉम्प्लिकेशन ऑफ सी एस एम शुड बी ऑन योर टिप्स बी पी वी बेनाइन पेरोक्सिसमल पुशन व टाइगो इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक वन इज ग्लोमस ट्यूमर दे विल आस्क यू वन पॉइंट फ्रैक्चर स्कल फ्रैक्चर्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड द लास्ट इंपॉर्टेंट मस्ट ट्री टॉपिक आउट ऑफ ऑटोस्क्लेरोसिस और मीनियर्स दे विल आस्क यू वन आई एम सी क्यू सो इन द अपकमिंग एग्जामिनेशन बेटा दे विल बी गिविंग यू फोर टू फाइव एम सी क्यूज रिलेटेड विद ईयर क्लियर एंड टेक माई वर्ड बेटा दीज शॉर्ट सब्जेक्ट्स आर हाईली स्कोरिंग दे आर इट इज वेरी ईजी टू क्रैक ऑल दी एम सी क्यूज ऑफ ई एन टी ऑपथेल ऑर्थो रेडियो सो जस्ट रिमेंबर इन योर एफ एम जी एग्जामिनेशन वर्क हार्ड ऑन द शॉर्ट सब्जेक्ट्स वर्क हार्ड ऑन द शॉर्ट सब्जेक्ट्स इट इज द वे टू गेट योर पासिंग मार्क्स एम एंड सो जस्ट ट्राई टू वर्क हार्ड ऑन योर short subjects after learning the we must read topic of year is not possible for me like i i can't go in the depth of each and every segment but at least i'm trying my best to give you all the keywords important keywords must read topics for your upcoming examination that in pharynx one of your old pyq they can ask you pharyngeal pouch where is a pharyngeal pouch located so it is somewhere between the thyropharynges and cricopharynges so all the important structures which are moving at different level of pharynx should be on your tips like they can ask you where is a pharyngeal pouch which are the important structures located above superior constrictor between superior constrictor this is my base of skull this is my superior constrictor so which are the important structures moving from this this area anyone who can write in the chat box let's see who reply which area is between base of skull and superior constrictor between base of skull and superior constrictor we have sinus of morgagnic we have sinus of morgag between base of skull and superior constrictor and which important structure move from this area your et tube is moving from your sinus of morgagni your et tube is moving that then which are the important structures moving between superior and middle three important amcqs your fmg people are fond of asking all these basic points which important structures move between middle and superior which important structure like in middle and superior we have stylopharynges glossopharynges styloid and ninth nerve they are best friend and the muscle attached with the styloid is stylopharynges supplied by ninth nerve in a space between middle and inferior your internal laryngeal nerve and superior laryngeal vessels they are moving and below the inferior constrictor we are having recurrent laryngeal nerve and inferior laryngeal arch inferior laryngeal arch these are the different structures moving at different level then what is the most important topic in pharynx in your fmg they can either ask you about retropharyngeal abscess or parapharyngeal abscess in retropharyngeal abscess we give i and i am talk about retropharyngeal abscess ind is behind is along the posterior surface of sternocleidomastoid but in case of parapharyngeal abscess just remember parapharyngeal abscess is the most common abscess of head and neck parapharyngeal abscess most common abscess of head and neck the incision is along anterior surface of sternocleidomastoid important concept retropharyngeal abscess how we identify in your mcq which keyword will be there there will be a keyword localized abscess localized abscess on posterior pharyngeal wall there will be a keyword of localized abscess on posterior pharyngeal wall in parapharyngeal abscess what will be the keyword keyword will be anyone who can write in the chat box keyword will be tonsil 
pushed medially with external neck swelling external neck swelling these are the two key words for your parapharyngeal abscess it is for parapharyngeal abscess done abscess very important topic then i am showing you one often repeated this is one of the important pyq on endoscopy which of the following structure is being shown to you beta so i am showing you which important fossa which is this fossa anyone who can write in the chat box which fossa is behind et tube this is my et tube just behind et tube option a just behind option b a is your torus tuberis and just behind torus tuberis is your fossa of rosen muller just remember again all the students who are listening to me make a start topic this can be a expected mcq they will ask you to identify et tube or torus tuberis or fossa of rosen muller and how will differentiate most entirely the opening entirely visible will be your et tube just behind et tube will be torus tuberis very nice response everyone in chat box excellent beta a is your et tube b will be your a prominent area just posterior superior to your et tube will be torus tuberis and behind is a fossa of rosen muller what is the importance of fossa of rosen muller here is my nasopharyngeal carcinoma here is my nasopharyngeal carcinoma done nasopharyngeal carcinoma clear so these are the important structures et tube torus tuberis make a start topic beta this i am high probability okay, they will ask you this point then they can show you a swelling below the chin if there is a swelling below the chin woody swelling just remember the keyword woody swelling below the chin in a diabetic patient if the examiner use a word diabetic they are talking about ludwig abscess this is again one of the important point ludwig abscess below chin woody swelling diabetic patient tonsil important topic they can ask you how many crypts are there we are having around 15 crypts the largest crypt is known as crypta magna important point crypta magna basic anatomy of tonsil they will ask you they can ask you to identify the stage of tonsillitis so just remember if they show you bilateral visual mcqs for the last two three years we are observing in your fmg examination they are giving you many image based mcqs if examiner give you this slide where both the tonsil are inflamed just try to appreciate this slide bilateral enlarged tonsil with high grade fever if examiner give you high grade fever it is going in the favor of which stage it is superficial tonsillitis cactal stage clear if examiner show you this type of image this is my follicular tonsillitis this slide is your follicular tonsillitis if examiner show you low grade fever examiner give the history of low grade fever with both the tonsil inflamed it means the pus infection have entered the bed of the tonsil we call it as parenchymal stage high probability out of four images they will show you this image where we label it as membranous tonsillitis we label it as membranous one worth remembering point for your fmg examination streptococcus membrane against diphtherial membrane streptococcus membrane never bleed diphtherial membrane bleed this is an important point which they highlight okay in your mcq streptococcus never bleed diphtheria bleed. again one slide expected because this was the last mcq of neat examination they can give you in large orange tonsil in the image is going in the favor of so just remember it is seen in dangerous disease expected mcq very important pyq orange color tonsil seen in dangerous disease i don't know why your fmg people have a special love for adenoid faces all the important points of adenoid 
should be on your tips. Every year, there is one MCQ on adenoid faces. Clear? So this slide is one of the important slides. Just motive of this session, fast revision of the important topics. I am showing you typical finding of angiofibroma. Angiofibroma, where I am showing you frog face deformity and the important radiological sign. Which important radiological sign I am showing you? I am showing you Hallman Miller sign. Hallman Miller sign. Angiofibroma, Hallman Miller sign. Clear? Frog face deformity, very nice, nice response in the chat box. You are giving absolutely right answer, Vita. It is your dangerous disease. This is again one of the important PYQ. Examiner can give you a history of cold, cough with loss of smell. So what will be the next step? Obviously, we will be going for nasopharyngeal swab for COVID. Clear. So just remember this is a important PYQ and I am confident you will not miss this question okay. coming in the larynx again your examiner is fond of asking three paired three unpaired they ask you the basic infrastructure of the larynx so just remember larynx is formed by three paired cartilages three unpaired cartilages which are the paired original coniculate cuneiform which are the unpaired thyroid cricoid epiglottis clear okay. so these are the important cartilages Important muscles. I, take, you know, if you take the question mark of last ten years, every year there is MCQ on adductor, abductor, which is the only one abductor, PCA, which are the other adductors, cricothyroid, crico, lateral crico arytenoid, thyro arytenoid, inter arytenoid. All these are adductors. While posterior crico arytenoid is a abductor, which is a opener of the larynx, thyro arytenoid. Epiglottis, which are the closer of laryngeal inlet. This slide, I can say, is one of the most important slide in the topic of larynx. Every year, they ask you something related with the muscles of the larynx. Your cartilage of the larynx or muscle of the larynx, very important point. Okay. Elevators of the larynx. Obviously, the muscle which is above the larynx, like stylopharyngeus, selfingo, stylo, selfingo, and palato, these are the elevators. They pull the larynx above. These are the important elevators. Which are the secondary elevators? Are myeloheart, digestric, stylo, and genoheart. Motive of this slide: whether all the muscles of the larynx should be on your tips important muscles related with your larynx all the muscles which are below larynx like sternohyoid sternothyroid and omohyoid all these are depressor of the larynx they will on contraction they will bring the larynx below very important point vocal cord paralysis again important topic in your larynx they will ask you unilateral and high probability they can ask you for bilateral superior laryngeal numbers this is the only one condition where we are having aspiration therefore we have to go for tracheostomy and epiglottoplastis they can ask you unilateral superior laryngeal palsy there is some low pitch voice of change in voice hoarseness is there and normally we wait and watch because it is not a emergency condition just remember which condition you get dyspnea so just remember bilateral recurrent nerves this topic is very important it is one of the most conceptual topic of larynx they can give you a typical history they can give you a typical history of head and neck surgery patient was operated head and neck surgery was done patient have severe dyspnea after the surgery if patient is having dyspnea, which nerve palsy can be there? It is bilateral recurrent nerve palsy. It is bilateral recurrent nerve palsy. What is the treatment for this? We have to go for tracheostomy or to thyroplasties. 